And for the final presentation here from Lund, we are joined by Roback and CEO Anders Monson. Welcome, Anders. Thank you. So welcome to the Roback presentation. My name is Anders Manson and I'm the CEO of the company. It gives me great pleasure to give this presentation today, especially as I can do this on the back of some really interesting results and achievements in the last few weeks, uh, which has also been rewarded by an increase in the share price. But let's start from the, from the beginning. What is Roback all about? Well, it's all about preventing cancer recurrence after curative intent therapy to the local tumor. Our lead drug candidate, RB001, is a rho c based cancer vaccine targeting metastatic cancer cells often remaining after primary tumor therapy, but coming in before the formation of metastatic tumors. The product is in phase 2b in prostate cancer. We're treating prostate cancer patients with biochemical recurrence with the ambition of preventing further progression of their cancer. For this indication, we have the FDA's fast track designation and we also have financial backing from the European Innovation Council in the Horizon 2020 program. Roback is looking for a partner after phase 2b, uh, which we deem will take place in uh, the first half of next year. Uh, and we're looking for a partner capable of doing phase 3 development in this area and also eventually securing a global launch of the compound. Let's start with a patient. What is our mission? What kind of patient is it that we're trying to help here? Well, it's the patient that I think we all know. It's the patient who undergoes a cancer diagnosis, surely a tumultuous experience in anybody's life. But there is hope on offer from the physician because there are as yet no metastases. So uh, a, a local therapy is recommended and performed. It could be surgery or radiation or a combination of the two. And this is done with initial success. But after that follows a period of intense waiting and anxious waiting on behalf of the patient. And we know, unfortunately, that a lot of these patients will experience a signal that suggests that they are at risk of progressing into metastatic disease. And this is what we want to prevent with our drug candidate, RB001, to prevent the progression of these patients into a metastatic state cancer, obviously with a far worse prognosis. So let's examine the background, the scientific background of Rho-C, which we use as an antigen. Already back in 2009, the American National Cancer Institute ranked Rho-C as a prioritized cancer antigen, citing it was potentially ideal for cancer vaccine development. This was based on prior research suggesting that in normal cells, Rho-C is silenced and has no interaction with the immune system, while as uh, metastatic potential cells had an overexpression of Rho-C and these, these cells could be identified by the immune system and it could be, these cells could be eliminated by the immune system. And this was also demonstrated preclinically in the diagram that you see on the slide. This is an effect to target cell ratio uh, diagram showing that metastatic cancer cells of different tissue origin could be eliminated by the activated T cells, the Rho-C activated T cells. And the interesting thing in this diagram is to see that there is no major difference between the ability to, to lyse or eliminate these cells uh, between the different tissue types of the cancer. So there's no difference here between colon cancer, melanoma, and breast cancer. The knowledge of Rho-C and how it interacts with cancer uh, has uh, been increasing in recent years. If you look at the, the results in 2012, it was concluded that a majority of cancer types uh, had an overexpression of Rho-C in its metastatic cells. And in 2019, it was concluded that Rho-C was indispensable in metastases. So our conclusion is that uh, we have a potentially tissue agnostic therapy concept uh, that is aimed specifically at metastatic cancer cells, which is obviously of great interest. So what is the product concept of RV001? Well, it's a 12 injection cancer vaccination program initiated after primary tumor therapy and using Rho-C based antigen. RV001 is actually a 20 amino acid fragment of that protein. And Rho-C is a protein that across tissue types uh, is indispensable for the ability of metastatic cancer cells to migrate and spread and infiltrate other tissue, which is what makes them so lethal. And obviously the aim with our therapy is to prevent or delay cancer recurrence and progression by inducing a T-cell immunity to potentially remaining metastatic cancer cells 
based on their unique overexpression of row C. So we know that we have an antigen that can excite the T cells uh, to search and destroy cells that have an overexpression of row C. But we still need to uh, circumvent or elude another problem. Cold tumors has remained a significant problem in immunotherapy. We know that the tumor structure itself can give rise to defense mechanisms that exclude and eliminate the ability of T cells or other immune system cells uh, to penetrate the tumor. So rather than fighting these tumor defense mechanisms, we target our, our therapy to be a non-toxic nip it in the bud therapy, targeting the deadly seed of potentially undetectable metastatic uh, cancer cells, potentially remaining after primary tumor therapy. So this has moved on to clinical phase and we've done a phase one, two trial back in 2018 with a one year follow up in 2019. This is published information and this is available through our homepage. Uh, I will read to you the, the main conclusions. We uh, induced a potent and long lasting T cell immunity in the majority of these patients. The majority was here 86%, so quite a vast majority. We had excellent safety and tolerability and this was confirmed also in the midterm analysis of our phase two data, which I will talk about later. And vaccination against Rho-C could potentially delay or prevent tumor recurrence and metastasis formation. And this is based on the analysis of PSA values. Recently, we also presented the headline data from a three-year follow-up of the phase one, two. So in this three-year follow-up, we found that no patient had progressed to metastatic state and no patient needed other therapy. And all but three patients had completely undetectable PSA levels and patients that had a weak PSA signal after three years all had a prolonged PSA doubling time, indicating a slowdown of their disease progression. And after three years, only one single patient who was a responder after the one year follow-up was now considered a non-responder. So this patient population was almost in its entirety intact as regards its T cell immunity. So obviously these very promising results had to be tested in a larger setting and with a placebo control group. And that is what we've done in our phase 2B study, which started in 2019. Here we have recruited 180 patients across 35 centers in Europe and the US. Uh, the aim of this study is to show that we're able to prevent progression, which is defined as PSA doubling, clinical recurrence or death in prostate cancer patients with biochemical recurrence after curative intent therapy. Recruitment is finalized and we anticipate to be able to conclude the study and compute results already in the first half of 2022. So why is this so interesting commercially? Well, if we start by focusing on prostate cancer, uh, let's examine this diagram. If you look at the diagram, you'll see on the left side, a gray bar indicating the number of patients diagnosed each year with local prostate cancer in the seven major markets of the world. If you go to the right side to the orange bar, you will see the number of cases of metastatic cancer being diagnosed each year in the seven major markets. Now, if you know something about prostate cancer, you'll know that most of the therapy in this area is hormonal therapy, which is by necessity focused on the metastatic cancer patients because of the side effects. But because we have designed our therapy as a non-toxic therapy, a vaccination therapy, we can aim earlier, we can treat earlier stage patients before they have symptoms and before they have metastases. Why cannot the currently available products do that? Well, it's because of the nature of these hormonal treatments. They're called ADT or androgen deprivation therapy, and they have castration or castration-like side effects. In the acute phase, those side effects can often lead to um, erectile dysfunction or loss of libido. But in the long term, there is also metabolic side effects or metabolic risk, especially in the cardiovascular area. But our treatment is potentially possible to use as a treatment for earlier stage patients. And obviously these patients uh, are several times more plentiful than the patients currently treated by the entire uh, prostate cancer drug market today. This is why this is so commercially interesting. However, it doesn't stop there. 
our first clinical proof of concept targeted is the indication currently pursued in the phase 2b program which is preventing progression and clinical prostate cancer recurrence in bcr patients however we could potentially expand from there first within prostate cancer we can possibly go to earlier stage patients even further earlier stage patients as a replacement for surgery or radiation in patients that are not suitable candidates for these procedures or in patients with other risk factors than a rising PSA. We could also go for later stage patients combining with ADT in patients that present with metastases. And the rationale for this is that, well, ADT uh, treats the hormone-sensitive hormone uh, uh, cancer cells, whereas each prostate cancer also has a, a number of cells that are not hormone-sensitive. And of course, our treatment being a vaccination doesn't discriminate between hormone sensitive cells and non hormone sensitive cells. So adding it on top of ADT might actually prolong uh, the lifespan of these patients or at least add to the effectiveness of the entire treatment. But as I've made a point of uh, the fact that Rho C is completely tissue agnostic, the really big expansion possibilities would also be in expanding into other cancers. Recently, uh, Edison Group has performed a new and updated analysis of ROVAC, uh, and they have the following to say about some key parameters. They forecast peak sales of our product, given successful development, of course, of eight, uh, sorry, 1.8 billion US dollars. In fairness, I should say that other analysts have other forecasts around a, uh, around a billion uh, US dollars, but at least it's blockbuster potential. This means also that the value of ROVAC is adjusted upwards to 1.6 billion, uh, corresponding to an 85 krona per share, uh, share price. And it should be noticed that this valuation considers the currently pursued prostate cancer indication only. If we're able to expand within prostate cancer, if we're able to expand outside of prostate cancer, this valuation would of course increase. And also it's explicitly stated in the analysis by Edison that if we have a positive readout of phase 2b, then the valuation would more than double. So the current situation of ROVAC we, is the following. We have ticked the boxes of a great many milestones. Ahead of us, we have essentially only a few. Uh, the first half of next year, we deem uh, to be able to uh, conclude the phase 2b study and compute the results. And after that, we will pursue a deal with a large oncology possibly urology focused company that is able to carry out the phase three uh, stage development and also a global launch, making this product available to patients all over the world. So I will try to summarize with this slide my pr entire presentation using only three symbolic images. The first image is obviously the picture of a rose, which symbolizes Rho C, please remember that Rho C overexpression is a unique trait of metastatic cancer cells, but it is not unique to any particular type of tissue or cancer. And therefore, uh, this precipitates a hope uh, that we have a tissue agnostic cancer vaccination concept on our hands. The second image is a picture of buds. And this symbolizes our nip it in the bud approach or preventive approach that we suggest for RV001. Uh, so in, in suggesting this, we avoid trying to treat possibly immune excluded and therapy resistant tumors. But we suggest that this approach of treating after primary tumor therapy, but before the formation of these metastatic tumors is the right approach. And the final image is the image of a race track. Obviously, it's a very fast track. And that's a play on words with the fast track designation that we have from the FDA. And it's also, of course, a symbol of a fast track uh, to the future for ROVAC as it stands currently. We deem uh, able to be able to uh, produce the results of the phase 2b study uh, already in the first half of next year. With that, I thank you very much for your attention and I leave you with some contact details. Thank you very much. And thank you for a very interesting presentation. Thank you. I have a couple of follow-up questions. Um, you are in the middle of a rather intense news flow at the moment, and you are focusing more and more on, like you said, reaching a deal for your lead candidate. Can you, um, can you describe the situation that Robok is in right now? 
Yes, it's a, it's a very happy situation. <laughs> I mean, we, we are very happy to have uh, taken us through the, uh, the challenge of recruiting patients for a clinical trial in prostate cancer in the midst of uh, the pandemic. But now we have full recruitment and of course uh, that feels great. It's a great achievement. We're also happy that we have recently re uh, produced very positive uh, phase one, two results uh, in terms of our three year follow up. Uh, and those results actually hold great promise uh, for the future and for the readout of the phase 2b. Uh, then we are of course happy that we are not so far away from having the conclusion of the phase 2b, so that is deemed to happen in, in the first half of next year. And in, in, in anticipation of that, we've also brought Stiefel Investment back on board. So we are able to say that we have the best deal team on board to secure the success, provided that we have a good readout of course. Uh, and I'm also very happy to conclude that we have an increased valuation both from third party analysts and in the actual share price. So it's, it's good and exciting times in Roback. I understand that. Um, you, like you said, you've brought Stiefel Investment Bank on. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're a, a small biotech company, uh, but we have a potentially really, really big opportunity on our hands. So, of course, we need to invest in having the best possible team in place to uh, to secure a good deal for, for Rovac and for, uh, for the continued development of this drug. And finally, of course, the readout from the Phase 2B study next year is, is your next big milestone. But what activities will you be focusing on until then? Well, we, we do mark a research in other cancer indications. As I just presented, of course, uh, we do have the opportunity to, to have this compound go into other cancer indications as well. We are not going to do it in Robac, apart from preclinical uh, development, uh, but we will be able to suggest to our partners what to prioritize and where to go. Uh, obviously, we're also updating and taking care of our data room, so that's ready uh, for the readout. And then we also have other development that we're doing in terms of preclinical and formulation development. So all this needs to come to conclusion fairly soon uh, so that we're able to have everything ready by the time we're ready to negotiate. So you certainly have busy times ahead of you then. Yes. But thank you so much for taking the time and telling us about it. Thank you so much. Thank you.